In this video I'll attempt to explain a little bit about input switches, outputs and software outputs on the Autronic SM4 and SM3 ECUs. To help demonstrate this, I'll be using a unit called an AutoSim Engine Simulator 1. The information and the picture of it is on the screen. This is a very helpful tool if you really want to learn about engine management and I highly suggest if you're serious about tuning, you get one of these units. Okay, now on to the actual SM4. Let's start the software up. And the first thing we'll look at today is kind of setting up a basic output, a few basic outputs. So let's say we want to set up a fan for an intercooler. We'd go down to our output setup, which is where most of it, where we start most of the time. In here, we'll pick a GPC. Now mine is already set up, but I'm going to say let me pick GPC seven. This will be at disable. What you're going to do now is pick a physical output pin from the ECU to assign this to. In this case, we've assigned it to inject the output injector eight, as we're not using that, which is pin two. Enter, continue. It'll give you a warning, and you continue. There you go. It's set up. Now when you go now to your M6, your GPC tables, and by the way GPC stands for General Purpose Control, you're going to come down to your GPC 7. That will be the only one available if you haven't set any up. Anything that's not set up will be grayed out and not accessible. So here we want to set up a simple on and off, and I'll explain a little bit about the menus that we're going to encounter. The first is setup. Now, the GPC set point is what we're using to control it. In this case, we want to use a table, a small table, 6x4. But you can also use any parameter, as can be seen here, as your GPC set point. But we're using the table here, so that would be our table. We can name it. There's a selection of names. Um, I just use auxiliary function. And that's that. Our next table is the inhibit table. And this is what we're gonna this is what we're gonna use a lot in different tutorials, different parts of the tutorial. Inhibit basically allows you to pick two parameters or two inhibit, inhibit variable one and inhibit variable two. You can pick any parameter, coolant, charge, temperature, battery temperature, you name it, you can there's a whole host of them to pick from. And you can use that to inhibit, which is basically turn off the output. In this case, we want our fan to work above 40 degrees Celsius and we set a very high number for it to turn off, so another number it will never achieve because we don't want it to turn off once it's above 40. We can go down here now and set an input duration, which means that once the inhibit value has ended, the output will still stay disabled for this amount of time. It allows like for a fan not to cycle on and off in a split second because it's hovering between those two temperatures. So in this case it's set to 1.5, it can be set a little longer. So what happens here now is that when your intake temperature is 40 degrees and above, your fan is on. When it drops below 40, your fan is off. And once your fan turns off, even when it goes above 40, it won't turn back on for another 1.5 seconds. To get this function to work, we still need to have a table. Because what we basically want to do with this table is have a single site. Which means that no matter what the condition is, it's always on. So we have a hundred percent in here which means that the fan is always on except when the inhibit occurs then it turns off. Now another way you could do this same setup is not to use the inhibit but to use the table. So if we could example disable the inhibit if we didn't want to use it and we could go along now and we go to table setup and instead of using engine position and throttle position we can use air temperature. So we'll scroll down and we'll select intake temperature. Now we'll go to our table and we're going to set our two temperatures up. We're going to set 38 degrees, so we're going to edit this, which press the E key and then edit intake and we're going to change that to 38 degrees. Then we're going to press insert and we're going to insert an intake temperature of 42 degrees. Now we're going to enter zero here, which means the output is off and 100, which means it's on. And because of the hysteresis between 0 and 100, what it means is that the input will not turn on until it reaches 40, and the input will not turn off until it reaches 38. So it gives us, it's like a, it's like a fan setting then, it gives us that, that option to do that. 
we could then turn around and use the inhibit for something else if we want to inhibit the fan at anything let's say load we want to make that manifold pressure we want the fan to be inhibited if the manifold pressure is below 100 we'd enter 100 zero, zero, and below 100 our fan would now be inhibited we set this to a very high number again like what we did with the air temperature and that's how you use the inhibits all right now let's go down now and set up we want to set up an intercooler sprayer we would go back to our outputs and set up another output in, the, in this case I have GPC 8 enter we pick our output in this case I'm using output 7 which is pin 42 enter then we would go across and we would set up our GPC 8 table in this case setup I've again picked a user table 6x4 I've named the intercooler sprayer from the selection for inhibit control I've used temperature again I want my sprayer to don't want it to work below 40 degrees there's no need the air is cooler cool enough already alright and again I have a 1.5 second inhibit duration now we go down to the table setup and I have the table set up by engine speed and manifold pressure. I go to my table now and this is how I have my setup. Anything below 130 kPa there is no in, there is no intercooler spraying. And anything above 135 there is spraying but only if the RPM above is above 4100 RPM. So our sprayer will not work when the RPM is too low and the boost is too low. We can to demonstrate how we can do further things. I suppose it was an intercooler sprayer, and we wanted it to turn back off after 7,000 and turn back on around 76. We can then insert an engine speed. So in this case, we'll insert 7050, and then we will insert another engine speed of 7550, and we'll insert another engine speed. Of 7600 zero. and we will simply enter 0 and 0. This means that our output would be off below 41, on from 41 to 7, off at 7050, and back on at 7600. That's, that's just a bit to demonstrate the flexibility in that case. Alright, and in that concludes this video. On, this, on the outputs. My next video will be on utilization of software outputs for very complex setups. Thanks for watching. Bye.